Hey everyone, welcome back. We're diving into a real life Clash of the Titans today. Oh yeah. A high stakes battle in the casino gaming world. Definitely high stakes. You know, it's not every day you see a legal battle that could actually reshape an entire industry. Right, and this one. But that's exactly what we're dealing with today. It really could. So buckle up because- Yeah, this one's a wild ride. We're about to explore a controversy that's sending shockwaves through the world of slot machines. Exactly, and it all starts with this game, Dragon Train. Dragon Train, right? Yeah, it's um, this new slot machine game um, from a company called Light and Wonder. Okay, Light and Wonder, they're a big player in gaming world, right? Oh yeah, they've been around for a while. They make all sorts of games for casinos. So what's so special about this Dragon Train game? What's all the fuss about? Well, on the surface, it's your typical slot machine. You know. Flashing lights, all that jazz. Exactly. Dragons, gold coins, the whole nine yards. But yeah. here's the thing. There are already like 2,000 of these machines out in the wild. 2,000. Yeah, spread across the U.S. and Canada. Wow. And get this. Even before this whole legal thing went down, those machines were pulling in an estimated $40 million a year. $40 million. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of coins. That's a lot of coins, and that's before this lawsuit even hit. Exactly. So you can see why everyone's paying attention. Yeah, big money, big drama. I get it. Now, the company crying foul is Aristocrat Technologies. Aristocrat Technologies, now they ring a bell. Oh, yeah. They're the big dogs, especially when it comes to those really popular games, you know, like Dragon Link and Lightning Link. Oh, yeah, those games are everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And those are the games at the center of this whole thing. Okay, so what are they saying? What's their beef with Dragon Train? Well, their claim is pretty simple. They say Dragon Train is a write-off. A rip-off. A rip-off of their games, Dragon Link and Lightning Link. Hold, hold on, are they saying Light and Wonder straight up copy their game? That's essentially what they're alleging. Wow, and they're not mincing words, are they? Yeah. They actually slapped Light and Wonder with a lawsuit. Oh, yeah, and not just any lawsuit. We're talking trade secret violations. Ooh, trade secrets. Now it's getting serious. Very serious, and things just got real because a judge recently sided with Aristocrat. No way they sided with Aristocrat. Yep, issued a preliminary injunction against Light and Wonder. Okay, so what does that mean? What's a preliminary injunction in plain English? Basically, it's like the judge saying, hold your horses, Light and Wonder. It means they can't sell or lease any more Dragon Train machines for now. Whoa. And So this is a big deal. It is, because it means those 2,000 machines that are already out there, the ones making all that money, yeah, yeah those might have to be pulled from casinos. Seriously. Yeah. They might have to pull the plug on those machines. It's a possibility the judge still has to make a final ruling, but this injunction suggests they see some merit in Aristocrat's case. Wow, that's got a sting for Light and Wonder. Tell me about it, and the market agrees. What do you mean? Light and Wonder's stock took a nosedive after the injunction hit? No kidding, how bad are we talking? Down a whopping 19%. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, it's a real blow, especially since his machines were doing so well. So what happens next? What's the next chapter in this casino drama? Well, to figure that out, we actually need to dig a little deeper into this whole idea of trade secrets in the gaming world. Okay, trade secrets, I'm intrigued. Break it down for us. So imagine you have this amazing recipe. Okay, I'm picturing it. It's your grandma's secret recipe for the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. Okay, I'm following you. Now you wouldn't just go around sharing that recipe with everyone, would you? No way, it's a secret for a reason. Exactly, it's valuable because it's a secret. It gives you an edge. Makes sense. Well, trade secrets in the business world are kind of like that secret recipe. Okay, I see where you're going with this. It's confidential information that gives a company a competitive advantage. Interesting. So we're not talking about just copying a game's look or feel. It's deeper than that. Exactly. It's about the underlying mechanics, the algorithms, the design documents, all the stuff that makes the game tick. So Aristocrat is basically saying, Light and Wonder got their hands on their secret cookie recipe. That's the gist of it. Yep. And to make matters even juicier, there's this whole connection between the two companies, right? Oh yeah, things just got a lot more interesting. So we're talking about more than just similar games. We're talking about former employees, potential insider knowledge. This is getting good. It is, and that's where we're headed next. Okay, I'm ready, lay it on me. So picture this, the CEO of the company being sued, Light and Wonder, you know who he used to work for? Who? Aristocrat. Get out of here, seriously. Yep, and he's not the only one. Several other top executives at Light and Wonder also came from Aristocrat. You're kidding, this is like a corporate soap opera. Tell me about it, and you can bet Aristocrat is using this in their case. 
Yeah, I bet they're saying, see, they took our people and our secrets. Exactly. It adds a whole new layer of intrigue to this whole thing, doesn't it? So picture this, you're light and wonder, the stakes are high, and the courts put a hold on your golden goose, this game that's bringing in serious cash. What do you do? Right. Well, you call in the CEO for a little damage control. That's exactly what Light and Wonder did, turning to their CEO, Matt Wilson, to address investors and maybe calm the waters a bit. It's classic crisis management, right? <laughs> Reassure your stakeholders, show them you've got a plan, and maybe even turn this whole situation into an opportunity. Right, because walking away from Dragon Train completely would be a massive hit. Yeah. So how does Wilson spin this? What's the message he's putting out there? Well, first he acknowledges the elephant in the room. He confirms that Light and Wonder is complying with the court order and pulling Dragon Train from casinos. Wow. But he doesn't dwell on the negative. Instead, he highlights the company's diverse portfolio. Okay. He reminds everyone that they've got other popular games out there, Ultimate Fire Link, Dancing Drums, just to name a few. He's essentially saying, hey, we're not a one-trick pony. We've got a whole stable of winners ready to fill those empty spaces on the casino floor. Diversification, smart move. Oh. But what about the loyal Dragon Train fans? Are they just out of luck? No more dragon-themed jackpot chases. This is where Wilson plays his trump card. Okay. He announces that they're already working on a new version of the game, Dragon Train 2.0. They're going back to the drawing board, reimagining the game, and making sure it's distinct enough to avoid any further legal entanglements. Okay, so maybe not a complete derailment, but more like switching tracks, finding a new route to that dragon-powered excitement. But this whole situation raises some really interesting questions, doesn't it? I mean, where do you draw the line between inspiration and imitation? Yeah. How much can you borrow from another game without crossing into legally murky territory? You've hit on a crucial point. This case highlights the challenges of intellectual property protection, especially in a field like gaming where innovation often builds upon existing ideas and mechanics. Right. How much inspiration is too much? It's a question with no easy answers, and it's something game developers grapple with constantly. So what does this all mean for us, the players? Are we going to see less creativity in games as companies become more cautious, more afraid of legal repercussions? It's a valid concern, for sure, but I think it's also an opportunity for even greater innovation. Okay. This case might push developers to dig deeper, to think outside the box, and to come up with truly original concepts that push the boundaries of what a slot game can be. That's the silver lining I like to hear. Well, on that note, I think it's time for us to cash out, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this case as it unfolds. Me too. This is one for the history books. It really is. And it just goes to show, even in the world of flashy lights and spinning reels, things aren't always as simple as they seem. Nope. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes. That's right. And sometimes those behind the scenes stories are the most interesting ones of all. Couldn't agree more. Well, that's a wrap on another deep dive. Thanks for joining us as we explore the high stakes world of casino gaming and the legal battle that could reshape the industry. Until next time, remember, sometimes the biggest jackpots come with the most unexpected twists and turns. <laughs>